and I wanted to mention something from a certain perspective that um, that is uh, that is bothering many many people. With no doubt, we can see that a lot of us are facing situations that are impossible to deal with. We're experiencing pain. We're experiencing sorrow, grief, fears, anxieties, and anger, frustration from life. And many are asking that question, how can it be that Hashem is good? How can it be that the Creator is good if we're going through so much? And everyone, unfortunately, in his life, even though that everyone is going through hours that are terrifying and are un unbearable and, 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 and frightening, and still with all the pain and sorrow that we go through in life, every one of us saw someone even in a worse condition than his. Even if we are going through such pain and such sorrow, we still can see that there are people that are suffering such great pain, such horrible losses and, and, and devastated by judgments and, and, and pain of this world and darkness. And this question is appearing every time and people they rather to, to not to confront that question, not to deal with it. They rather to hide it and to ignore it and, um, and to, to act in certain ways that will postpone that, um, that, that conflict of the huge question, that inner doubt that many of us experience in our lives. If Hashem is good or what in the world is going on here? Like, how can it be that Hashem is good? Like we're claiming that He is Father of Mercy, the source of kindness, the, 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 like all good, the source of good, and, and all those descriptions that we will happily gonna, gonna attach to Him. When in the same time we see like, People are dying all over the place. People are being kicked out of their houses. People are being destroyed. People are dying in plagues. Like, and, and, and all the creation is suffering from this pain. Like people are, are millions of people are homeless. Millions of people are, are hungry, are suffering. So I really, really, before we are even talking about this topic, there is something that is very important for me to say. And this is kind of my point of view on this situation, on that conflict, on that question. First of all that I'm saying is that the fact that I'm not able to see, the fact that I'm not able to see does not change the reality of life. The fact that I can not see the full picture, the fact that I cannot understand everything that goes on here in the world does not change what that really goes on, does not change reality. First of all, there is reality, and maybe I cannot see it all. Now, I, even though that I'm finding myself struggling and also experiencing a lot of pain, and my family and I were wandering and traveling and we don't have our roots, we don't have our place, we don't have our safety. Most of the times we are in that unknown zone all the time with question marks on our lives and always asking what we're going to do and what will happen. And still, we're not like those happy campers that couldn't care less. We, we are people that need security. We are people that, that needs their safety. We need to know where we're gonna to sleep tonight, but we don't. We need to know where we're gonna to stay tomorrow, but we don't. And those hours of, of, of doubts, of fears are troubling us, but we're trying all the time to set our mind and to focus our eyesight onto those good things that we do know that we have and to focus on the good, like the Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is saying, to focus on the good points that the person has in his life, this is something that provides safety. It gives you balance. It gives you a certain hope that 
the rest of the darkness will not overpower you and gonna defeat you and gonna overpower you and, and surrender you to it. Because those good points that you have in your life, those points of stability, those things that you do know that you achieved until now, those are things that in a realistic point of view, you also do have them in your life. It's not only hopes in heaven. It's not only assumptions that you heard from a third party, someone that said, oh no, Hashem is good. Okay, you know what, I'm going to count on it. Those are moments of clarity that you yourself experienced in life. Those moments that you're leaning on, those amazing clarifications and mo bright moments that you had in your life are experiences that you experienced in your life as an individual, as a person. You yourself felt the hand of heaven in that situation. And you were aware to a certain situation that a divine hand of a divine supervisor, supervisor was involved you saw how things fell into place. You saw that you didn't have a chance to complete that journey. And in the end of the day, you were able somehow to do that. And you experienced those miracles. And those are the roadblocks that are building your path. Those are the things that makes you stable in life. And even though that around you, there are many, many challenges and many, many difficulties and many, many things that are still not clear and it's not obvious that things will go fine and smooth like you desire them to. But still, in the end of the day, there are many, many moments of your own life that you will testify that those moments took place in your life. And those are the clear evidence that are built in faith structure of your life, the solid ground of your truthfulness, of lo your loyalty, of your honesty. Those are the moments that built your character to be that honest person that you are today. If you wouldn't see that hand of the supervision of the Creator on your life, you wouldn't change your life to such a great place of being called a believer person of truth, a truth seeker. You wouldn't walk and ask for more faith if you wouldn't recognize it so many times in your life. So even though that we're not able always to explain all the questions and all the, if you would ask me about my friend that just been killed a few days ago, and you're going to ask me, how can it be? I don't have an answer. If you're really going to ask me, I don't have an answer. That thing crushed my heart that thing crushed and shaked my family's heart. We all knew him. We all, he hosted us in, in San Antonio. He took care of us. He took us from one place to the other. We spent such amazing time together, such a charming and loving and good and sensitive person. I can send you recordings of voice notes that he sent to me a few weeks ago. He was learning. Um, in a certain school, a profession, and he invested all his money for the for that school because, he, and he, he like that that is a person that was working for his living like hard, and and because that he invested in in his learning, he didn't have money to pay for 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 a house. He was sleeping in his own van and being hosted by friends and stuff. Like he was almost homeless just because he followed his dream and wanted to learn and to finish school and to have a profession of doing something that he really liked to do in his life. And while he was learning in that profession, in, one, in, in that school, in one of the days, suddenly he saw the manager, the principal of that school, screaming on a homeless person that was digging for some I don't know what in the garbage, in the dumpster. And he insulted him. And he called and that manager insulted that homeless person while taking like garbage out of the dumpster and, and insulting her, you can do that and threw things on her and like he was very rude to her. And Angel called me and told me like, he sent me a message, a voice note, and he told me in that message, I'm thinking to drop off school. I think I cannot continue learning here. Like if the manager, if the principal of the school 
is so rude to a homeless that he does not have pity for her. I, I cannot, I cannot learn from him. I cannot. I, I'm like, I'm ready to throw everything. Like, and the person himself is homeless. The person himself is investing every dime, every penny to be in that school. And like, and suddenly he's being killed, like for no reason in the world. You cannot answer that. This is a question that you cannot answer. No one can answer that. But for me, even though that it's painful, even though that the sorrow is deep, even though that the questions are huge, even though that it shakes all my stability, it does not erase the solid moments of clarification that I experienced in my life. The fact that I see something dark right now does not mean that I haven't seen the day. If today is Monday, it doesn't mean that yesterday it wasn't Sunday. Everything that you see is another part of the puzzle and it doesn't answer and it's not an excuse and I'm still doubting and I still have questions and I still want to fight and I want to I want to change those horrible decrees and I'm in a war in my life. I'm in a war. But this war does not mean that there is no creator to this kingship, to this creation. So with that and with much more that we have to say, we need to remember not to erase our truth and not to erase our understandings because of the pain that we're experiencing in life. Because in one moment of despair, a person can destroy his life. In one moment that a person gives, gives up on his life and on the life of his beloved ones, he can ruin so much that maybe he won't be able to fix later. And therefore, we need always to work as hard as we can not to give up and not to let go from the good things that we achieved until now. And only, only always to pursue more good and more light and more positive things for our journey and to try to do as much good as we can to all of our beloved ones. And like I said, this is a huge question. The creator is good or what's going on. There are such huge amounts of judgments that we're experiencing in life. We must take every experience and to put it in its spot and to understand that it's part of an answer that is much, much greater and larger than we can understand right now. Unless you think that you are wise enough to answer, so maybe you're wiser than me and then you're more than welcome to answer it. But if not, or if you agree with me, so bless you. And I think that that's a path that we should all walk in to understand that what that goes on in this creation is much, much greater and larger than us. We cannot write down the description of the particles of one leaf on one tree. We don't know how one leaf of one tree is built, how it's organized and how it's built and how the cells and the atoms are running. Like no science in the world that is able to answer all the questions that you're going to have on one leaf, on one tree. So to know the whole picture of all of this huge, gigantic creation that is endless in the end of the day is not something that we are able to do as for now. So as for now, just hold on to the good points, to the solid ground that you still have under your footsteps and keep on marching to Zion like there is no tomorrow. Do everything you can do today to succeed and Hashem Bezat Hashem will reveal His kindness and cancel and throw away all the judgments from our lives. Amen. The world is not exist because Olam Milchon Elem, the world is just blocking the light of truth. The world called Alma de Shika, world of light, is just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. It's just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. We're just inside of an illusion.